thank you, Jesus. So why don't we do that tonight together? Let's continue that atmosphere of worship with no ramp up, no warm up tonight. We're in your presence, Jesus. We're here to worship you. We're here to magnify you. We're here to give you praise. We're here, Lord, that you would inhabit our praise tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, you're glorious. You're worthy of our heartfelt expression of worship, exaltation to you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hungry for you. Hungry for you. Let your word make me brand new. I'm thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. Let your living water fill me through and through. Hungry for you, hungry for you. Let your word make me brand new. I'm thirsty for you, thirsty for you. Let your living water oh, fill me through. I'm hungry for you. Hungry for you. Let your word make me brand new. I'm thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. Let your living water me through and through take me and mold me shape me make me brand new and change me break me collect I'm hungry. 
hungry for you hungry for you let your word make me brand new i'm thirsty for you thirsty for you let your living water fill me through one more time oh i'm hungry for you hungry for you let your word make me brand new i'm thirsty for you i'm thirsty for you let your living water fill me through and through yes jesus of the Lord is here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here tonight in a very special way. And we can be renewed in his presence. We can be refreshed in his presence. We call this Oasis service for a reason, because we want to come into his presence. We want to feel his presence wash over us. We want to feel his spirit renew us. We want to be touched by him. Amen. In his presence. Amen. In his presence tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. Jesus, I worship you tonight. Jesus, I praise you tonight, God. You're worthy, Lord, of every word of praise that we could give. And then so much more. God, if I spent my entire life worshiping you, it would never repay or come close to touching what you've done for me in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let my desire be towards you today. Let my heart be towards you today, God. Lord, as your spirit washes over us, as we connect with you, Lord, tonight in your presence, God, I pray that you'd minister, that you'd touch every need, that you'd touch every heart. God, you know exactly what we need tonight. But let our desire be towards you. Let our hunger be towards you. Let our, Lord, our thirst tonight be towards you. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let the power of the Holy Spirit rain. Let it pour on my soul. For I am thirsty, Lord, so let it rain. Oh, let it rain. Let it rain. Let the power of the Holy Spirit reign. Let it pour on my soul. For I am thirsty, Lord, so let it rain. Let it rain. No, let it rain. Let the power of the Holy Spirit reign. Let it pour on my soul. 
power of the Holy Spirit reign. Let it pour on my soul. For I am thirsty, Lord, so let it rain. Oh, let it rain. Oh, yeah. Amen. Got a mic with the Holy Ghost. Got the power thereof. Amen. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Job chapter 23, and we're reading beginning with verse 4. We're just launching right into the midst of Job's speaking, and he said, I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments, and I would know the words 
which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, he said, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, and I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, that I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But, he said, he knoweth the way that I, I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Notice this, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen. I have esteemed. Amen. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen. And I want to talk to us tonight for a few moments about esteeming the voice of God in your life. Amen. Job was in a time of great challenge, a time of great questions. He didn't know why he was where he was at. He didn't know or understand why he had incurred what seems to be like the judgment of God upon his life. He has tried to do everything right, and yet he is in the midst of the worst of his fears. He says, the things which I have feared have come upon me. Amen. It was a dark day and a dark hour. But he says in our text here, he said, I would know the words that he, God, would answer me and understand what he would say to me. And then in the last verse of our reading, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen. I have esteemed the words of his mouth. Amen. What a, what a wonderful thing to hear the voice of God. Amen. And, uh, and it is important for us tonight to learn to esteem the words of God, the voice of God in our lives. Because you see, we have so many voices in our lives each one demanding equal or even, uh, even more than equal attention. Each one demanding of us to stop, to look, to listen, and to heed. And it seems like sometimes that the voices in our natural life are so much louder, so much more demanding, amen? so much more uh, 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 pushed upon us, amen? And uh, often in our lives, the, the voice of God in our lives gets to be shuttled down the, uh, the level of priorities in our life. For us to esteem someone, if we would say, if I would say tonight, that so-and-so is highly esteemed. Amen. What would that mean to you? It would mean that I had great respect. I had great value placed in that individual. Amen. This is what Job was saying. I have esteemed the words of his mouth. His voice means more to me. I have more a much greater respect for the words of his mouth even than my necessary food, my necessary things. Amen. What happens when you get a little hungry? Hallelujah. Who wins? 
Well, you can say, well, I win for a while, but it gets more demanding, doesn't it? It, it talks to you more. Your stomach can talk to you. Amen. It can. And it says to you when it's hungry, it says, feed me. And if you don't feed that hungry stomach, after a while it says, you better feed me or you're going to die. Right? Well, we've got that in the Bible, right? Esau came back from a hunting trip and he was so hungered naturally that he sold his birthright to his brother just to feed his stomach for a moment's satisfaction. Amen. Our necessary uh, livelihood, our, the things that we deem or consider necessary in everyday life many times preempt everything else in our lives. And I, I say that just to make the point that there are many voices. And this is not just uh, uh, the voices of our own carnal nature and our needs, but the voices that surround us in our world, amen, that press in on us, that demand our attention, amen. And uh, so many, many voices. But I'm here tonight to remind us that of all the voices in our life, the most important voice that speaks into your life tonight is the voice of God. It's the voice of God. Now Romans, Paul writes to the Roman church and to us tonight, in the 8th chapter, 14th through the 16th verse, he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, or our Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Does anybody want to be considered tonight a child of God? Amen. Amen. I want to be considered a child of God tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. We sing about it. We talk about it. Amen. There's nothing more precious than being adopted into the family of God and to be a child of God as John wrote in the first chapter of his gospel to as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God we are God's offspring his children tonight amen by virtue of of his coming his sacrifice his redemption tonight amen being the firstborn among many brethren and leading us in that way. We are, amen, the children of God. Amen. We are. The, is anybody happy about being a child of God tonight? Amen. Don't just look at me tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm happy about being a child of God. I said I'm happy about being a child of God. I'm not happy about everything that happens in life. I'm not uh, excited and happy about everything that happens Amen, even in the church. But I'm happy tonight about being a child of God. Hallelujah. I can, I can get through almost anything as long as I can retain my relationship with my God tonight. And, and Job said, I have esteemed his words. Amen. The words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen. So valued was his words. Moses, man of God, was unique in his relationship with God because Exodus 33 tells us and in Deuteronomy chapter 34, both of these scriptures tell us that the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Amen. As a man speaketh unto his friend. In the Deuteronomy 34, it says, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Amen. Oh, what a statement to be said of you. Amen. What a statement that Moses and God were of such close relationship that they spoke face to face, that they were able to communicate not as 
superior, righteous, holy God and lowly man, but as friends, as in relationship, he was able to speak with God face to face. Oh, that's what we desire and need tonight is to have that kind of relationship where we can hear the voice of God and we can respond to the voice of God and we can meet with God face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Israel was a people. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 35 says, I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there I will plead with you face to face. You see, God loves to talk. God longs to talk to his people tonight. Amen. He longs to talk to you tonight. He longs to, a, to be able to communicate with you tonight. And God is speaking. Deuteronomy 5 verse 4. The Lord talked with you face to face. Israel in the mount out of the midst of the fire. And I stood between the Lord. Moses speaking. You between you and the Lord at that time to show you the word of the Lord. God has always desired to speak to his people. And I fear that we live in such an hour tonight that we do not take the time to push away all the noise, even for a few moments of time and zero in and listen to what the voice of God is speaking in our lives. Amen. Amen. I'm talking tonight about esteeming. Everybody say esteeming. Esteem. Esteeming the voice of God in your life. How important is God's voice in your life? It is a question that we've got to each of us answer for ourselves. Because we and we alone set the priorities of our lives, the priorities of our relationship with God. We decide how committed we're going to be, how plugged in we're going to be, how, amen, faithful we're going to be. We're the only one that can do that. God can't do it for us. Pastor can't do it for you. Nobody can do that for you but you yourself. Amen. And it is that estimation, that esteeming the, uh, the value and the importance of God's voice in our lives that, that gives to us, amen, strength and help and direction, amen, in our lives that is so necessary for us to walk in this day and time. Beautiful story of Samuel as a young lad serving in the, uh, in the temple, ministering before the Lord as uh, was his lot given to the work of the house of the Lord. And there came a day. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Amen. This was not the first time God had called and spoken to Samuel. Samuel was young. He was, uh, he was unaware. He was not yet familiar with God's voice in his life. But, uh, but there came a moment because God doesn't give up on you easily. Amen. He'll come to you again and again and again and again and he will speak to you and he will speak into your life and he awaits for that moment when clarity comes and we understand. Amen. But this time as was counseled uh, by Eli, he said, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Amen. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth shall tingle. Amen. He gave to him the word of the Lord. Oh, what a electrifying moment. Here, Samuel's life pivots in a moment's time. Because now... He is understanding. He is, he is fixed on. He is plugged into the voice of God in his life. You know, from that moment on, Samuel is no longer just a minister in the house of the Lord. But he, be, he begins at those moments to become 
a prophet in Israel. Later, of course, we know he is also a judge. But, uh, but, but God, amen, was using this young man who was dedicated to the house and the work of the Lord by speaking into his life. And, and, and from the moment that he recognized the voice of God and could discern what God was saying in his life and in his heart, amen, it changed, it pivoted his life in a moment's time and he he moved on into God's plan and will for his life later on the scripture would say that the Lord never let any of the words of Samuel fall to the ground amen why because he was a man that could hear the voice of God amen Elijah was a man and the scripture says he's, he was like us, giving to us the understanding that he experienced life just like we did, we do. And God said to him in 1 Kings 19, he said, and Go forth and stand in the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountain, break it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, but after the fire a still, small voice. You see, amongst all the voices that we hear, that we are bombarded with on a daily basis, probably the most important voice in your life is many times the most quiet amen he was not in the wind he was not in the earthquake he was not a man in the fire that wasn't the voice of God speaking that might have been the acts of God but it wasn't the voice of God but when all of the noise subsided there came a still small voice amen we hear the voice of God in our, our lives in many different ways. Amen. Obviously, God is able at times to speak to us audibly. God can speak to us and does speak to us through his word. Whether it is the written word, when we read the scripture and we meditate upon it, or whether that word is preached, amen, and spoken as commanded by God. This is another way that God speaks to us. Amen. It may be that it is just a still small voice that speaks in the deep recesses of your heart. Amen. In our second passage of scripture in Romans, as many as are led of the Spirit. I submit to you tonight, being led of the Spirit means to being connected to the voice of God in your life amen Isaiah wrote and said in that day the day of Messiah in that day you shall hear a voice behind you saying turn this way to the right or this way to the left amen this is what God meant when he said that the Holy Spirit would be your teacher amen that when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost that one of the attributes of his presence in our lives would be that voice that comes into our hearts and is able to speak into our hearts on a daily basis, that is able to communicate to us. Amen. Oh, I, I want to tell somebody tonight that the most important voice that you can be tuned into tonight is the voice of God in your life. And if there's any voice that you need uh, to esteem tonight is to esteem God's voice in your life. He uses many ways of speaking to us. He speaks to us in conviction to draw us unto him. He speaks to us in invitation. Come unto me, he said. Amen. All ye that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. He, he speaks to us, amen, in correction. Amen. Does anybody ever need correction? 
We all need correction. Amen. We all need the admonition of, of the presence of God. And I don't know about your experience or not, but uh, it's been my experience that, that uh, when I have done something hey, that is displeasing to God, amen, I hear his voice in my life. You shouldn't do that. That's not something I, I'm proud of. Amen. You need to rectify that. Has anybody ever... You only hear good things from God? Amen. You ever get correction from God? Does the Spirit ever speak to you? Does a verse of Scripture come to you in a moment, time when you've made a misstep? Amen. I'm telling you tonight, God speaks to us in many ways. And He only corrects us because He loves us. Amen. He only, he only speaks to us in corrective measures because he cares about our eternity and our relationship with him and, and our ability to inherit eternal life and live in his presence. Amen. And God speaks to us as a father. Amen. He said, uh, he said, whereby we may cry, Abba, our father. Hallelujah. He speaks to us in such a fashion tonight. Amen. When we pray. God speaks to us. Amen. Maybe that's why we don't like to pray sometimes. We're afraid of what God's going to say. Amen. I've been there. I didn't want to hear what he had to say. Because I knew what he was going to say. And in those moments when you're, you're forced to submit and say, Not my will, but yours be done. Amen. You've got to heed the voice of God in your life. But I promise you, it will always be to your best outcome. It will always work together for my good. Amen. God is interested in my, amen, good tonight. And he, if we can listen to his voice, he will lead us and guide us in the pathways, amen, of in our life. You know, God also speaks to us through our circumstances. I've been in situations where well, all, all of a sudden I woke up to realize God put me there for a reason. He wanted, he wanted me to learn something. And I've been in some very uncomfortable situations and woke up to the fact right in the middle of it that God had me there for a reason. It was God's design that I was there. Now there's some things that I get there because I do them. And there's some things that happen that are just life. But there are those things that God will lead you into certain circumstances and certain life challenges. And in those life challenges, he's going to reveal to you something about himself. He's going to speak into your life in a new way, in a new fashion. And so we need to not be quick to, uh, to uh, check out of a life situation or a challenge that comes to us because it might be God's voice in our lives speaking to us and leading us and guiding us so that we might know him in a greater way. Believe it or not, the voice of God speaks through the man of God. Amen. Through the pastoral ministry. And... Uh, I've had occasions where people years after an incident have come back to me and said do you remember what you said to me and such and such and such and such and I sometimes just look at them kind of waiting for them to tell me because I don't have a clue what I said and then they would relate to me what I said and I would understand it that wasn't me that said that. I, it might, the words might have come out of my mouth, but God put the words there for a reason, to speak to them, amen, to challenge them, to give them hope, amen, to help them lift themselves up above their challenge, their circumstance, their situation. God uses, amen, godly men and women in your lives many times to speak through them 
to you. Now, I'm not trying to spookify this. I think God, the gifts of the Spirit, and the voice of God works in such a natural fashion that we don't even recognize half the time that the true gifts of the Spirit are in operation or the voice of God is being spoken. We don't have to have a drum roll. We don't have to have a stage. We don't have to have, amen, somebody on a pedestal for God to work through somebody else. And I've seen God work through some of the most, if you pardon me for saying it like this, the most simple, naive even, well-meaning people to communicate something that he wanted somebody to know. Amen. God uses godly people. Amen. The men of God, the people of God, the church of God, to speak into our lives, to help us. Amen. To lead us, to guide us. And we need tonight to understand how valuable the words of God are in our lives. They are far above any value that you could place on them. I'm talking tonight about esteeming the voice of God in your life. Amen. And then that gentle voice of the shepherd. John chapter 10, Jesus said, Verily, verily, or truly, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Him the porter openeth, the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. They know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from them, for they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. For they know his voice. Amen. They know his voice. Do you, could you say that tonight about yourself? Do you know the voice of God? Can you recognize the voice of God? Can you hear the voice of God? I see people, I work, I've worked with people over the years, they don't have a clue about the voice of God. I've seen them run the aisles, shout, have a great time, enjoy the presence of God, enjoy a good service, the Holy Ghost moving. And yet, when it comes to being sensitive to the Spirit of God in their lives, they're like a piece of dead wood. Just nothing really resonates in them. I hope that's not true about you tonight. Amen. I hope you feel and hear the voice of God. I hope you are able to tune in to the frequency that God, amen, is on tonight. They that hear his voice, amen. Him the porter openeth the sheep hear his voice. He calleth his own sheep by name. Hallelujah. Amen. Your name is on God's lips tonight. Hallelujah. And he's calling you tonight. And he wants to talk to you tonight. Amen. He wants to talk to you tonight. Do you want to hear his voice tonight? Amen. Do you want to hear his voice tonight? What would his voice be saying to you tonight? What is the Spirit saying? We get to the book of Revelations and the messages to the seven churches in Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3. And the admonition over and over again was this. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. In other words, the Spirit is speaking tonight. Even in this oasis service, midweek service night, God's voice is speaking. Amen. The question is not, is God speaking? I have endured times of silence from God in my life. Amen. But not very many. Amen. Not very many. 
There have been times when God has allowed me to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Not by ears, ears either. Amen. Just trusting God. Trusting God. Amen. Because I know the clouds will roll back. Amen. The sky will clear up and I'll hear his voice one more time. Amen. And he will give me direction. Notice in our text scripture tonight, and I'm closing, let's stand together. It said that when he speaks, God speaks, his word speaks. Amen. He said, he will put strength in me. He'll put strength in me. Oh, isn't that wonderful tonight? We get tired and weary in life. We we get uh, bombarded with dif difficult challenges, decisions, situations. And to hear the voice of God will always put strength in you. Amen. Strength in you. Praise God. I fear less of what God will say than that he'll say nothing at all. Amen. I have met a few people, two or three people, in my lifetime who has said to me that when they turn their back on God they never could hear God again and it's been said to me like I said two or three times over my lifetime people I've known who walked away from God and then tried to come back after a period of time and just could not hear his voice anymore. amen and I don't know what transpired in their life. I don't know what their circumstance is. But what, what a horrible thing to not hear the voice of God. How blessed we are tonight because we can hear his voice. How blessed we are tonight because God can speak into us. He can put strength in us tonight. He can build our faith up when we're at low ebb. He can, amen, give direction in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful thing to have God's voice in our lives. Could we just love him and thank him for it tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise you tonight. We worship you tonight. We esteem your voice tonight, oh God. In our lives, we esteem you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this room tonight. I feel God's voice in this room tonight. Hallelujah. God wants to speak into our lives tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Let's talk to him for a few moments tonight. Hallelujah. God, we thank you tonight. Praise God. We thank you tonight for your presence and for your peace. Speak to us, oh God. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Do you feel his presence right now? Yes. Amen. If you feel his presence, you need to plug into that just for a few moments tonight. Amen. As we worship the Lord, let's plug into what we're feeling tonight, what, what God is doing tonight in your heart. Praise God. on me oh, yes. Holy Ghost power breathe on me yesterday's gone today I'm in need Holy Ghost power breathe on me breathe on me on me Holy Ghost power oh, hallelujah, breathe Jesus. on me oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for yesterday's God today I'm in need Holy Ghost power breathe on me breathe on me 
breathed on me. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Yesterday's gone, today I'm in need. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. esteem his voice. Amen. I want to esteem his voice in my life. Yes. Hallelujah. I need his voice. I need him to talk to me. I need his guidance. I need his help. Praise God. Oh, thank God. Let's love him one more time tonight. Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you tonight. We praise you. Oh, God, we praise you. Thank you for your presence in this midweek service tonight, oh God. What a welcome presence of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, we have felt in our hearts and our souls tonight. God, we are leaving this place refreshed and renewed because of your presence, Lord. Oh God, thank you tonight for your presence. Thank you for tonight for your presence. Thank you tonight for your presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go with us from this building, but let your spirit not depart from us. Be with us, O oh God. Lord, as we go about this evening, be with us tomorrow. Bring us again into your presence, we pray. In Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen. God bless you tonight. So good to see everybody. In Jesus' name, amen.
shape that we were in And just when all hope seemed lost Love opened the door for us He said To the young and to the older, all who hunt. 